Some churches teach that God has already made the choice for you whether you'll go to heaven or go to hell. What does the Bible teach? Stay tuned to Bible Line and find out. Welcome to Bible Line Ministries with Bible Prophecy Expert, Radio Talk Show host and pastor, Dr. Hank Lindstrom. Over the next half hour, enjoy as Dr. Lindstrom takes you on a journey through the scriptures. Now, Dr. Hank Lindstrom. Welcome to the program. I'm Dr. Hank Lindstrom. I'm your host. We'll be talking about the scriptures. We'll be turning to some of those scriptures. You might want to get your Bible out and turn with me. You might also want to get paper and pencil and jot down some of the references so you can look them up later and study on this topic. Also, you will get a chance to look at my Bible as we'll throw up some of the verses of Scripture on the screen. But uh, hopefully uh, you will enjoy this uh, series. A lot of people have been frightened by the whole doctrine of predestination. And they teach basically that God has already made the choice for you, whether you go to heaven or go to hell, and that you don't have a choice. And uh, that's kind of scary, isn't it? And yet, I don't believe the Bible teaches any such thing. The Bible divides the world into two groups, those that believe and those that believe not, and it's quite apparent in the Bible that you have the choice to decide which group you're going to be in. Look, if you will, at John 3.18, where it says, He that believeth on him, on Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because, it says, he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Notice here, two groups. Those that believe, and those that believe not. And those that believe not are condemned already, and the reason why is because it says he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So here we have the unpardonable sin. It obviously is unbelief. And if you die rejecting Christ, you'll go to hell. And if you are right now an unbeliever, then you're already in a condemned state. And the reason why you're condemned is because you haven't believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. But the one who believes on Christ is not condemned. Isn't that amazing? So it's, it's clear in the Bible that uh, there's a choice to be made. And the choice is to trust Christ or not trust Christ. And those who trust Christ are not condemned. Those that do not trust Christ are condemned already. And they're condemned not because they lied or stole or cheated or murdered or committed adultery or any other sin, they're condemned according to the verse because they have not believed. Wow. So you can know right now which group you're in. Are you in the group that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? And that group, according to the Bible, is saved. So what God has determined, obviously, is which group is saved and which group is lost. The ones who believe are saved, and the ones who do not believe are condemned already. And the reason why they're condemned is because of their unbelief. Nowhere does it ever tell us that God makes the choice for you. So everybody in the human race has an opportunity to believe or not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we talk about predestination... The Bible clearly tells us that God has predetermined that those that would believe would be saved, but those that would not believe would be lost. So the ones that believe are not condemned, but the ones that believe not are condemned already, and they're condemned because they have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Pretty simple, isn't it? D.L. Moody, the great evangelist, simplified it, I think, as best as anybody ever will. He said, the whosoever wills are the elect or the chosen, and the whosoever wants are the non-elect or the non-chosen. So the choice is simple, to believe or not believe. Now, if you're not a believer right now in Jesus Christ, then the Bible says you're condemned right now. 
and you're condemned because you have not believed. And obviously that condemnation will take you into eternity away from God or apart from God in hell forever and ever and ever. You don't want that to happen to you. You would rather, I'm sure, be in the group that will be saved. And that group is those that believe on Christ are not condemned. Let me give you another verse right here in the same chapter where we find similarly the same concept. In John 3.36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath or has, in modern English, everlasting life. So if you're a believer, you have everlasting life. But then it goes on to say, He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So we have here again two groups, those that believe and those that believe not. Those that believe have eternal life. Those that believe not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So again, notice there are choices. And if God has made the choice for you, there wouldn't be any choices. But God has given us a choice. If you believe, if you trust Christ, then you will have, at the moment you believe, everlasting life. But if you do not believe on Christ, then the Bible says you'll never see life. If you die in that condition, you'll go to hell. And it says the wrath of God abides upon that unbeliever. Wow. So where do you stand with God? Right now, you can tell me which group you're in, and I'll tell you which group is going to go to heaven. It's the believers. So if you're in the group that is a group of unbelievers, you're in the group of those that have not believed on Christ, then the Bible says that you're condemned already, that you'll not see life, that the wrath of God will abide upon you forever. But if you're in the group that believes, the Bible says here in verse 18 that you're not condemned, and in verse 36 that you possess right now everlasting life. Pretty plain, pretty clear, and I think that uh, it doesn't have, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this thing out. But the choice is yours. God has determined what happens to each group dependent upon their choice, but the choice is yours. So where do you stand? I hope you're a believer. I hope you've trusted Christ as your Savior. And if you have, then you can be assured of going to heaven whenever you die. We're going to turn now to another passage, and this is over in uh, Romans chapter 8. And here it says, in Romans 8.30, or 8, rather 8.29, for whom God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. Now this is an interesting verse, and again, a lot of people just read this and they get scared. But it says, whom he did foreknow. Now God knows the future naturally. It's because God is not bound by time. God does not know the future because he has made your choice for you, but he knows the future because he knows the future before it happens because God is not bound by time. And so he knew there would be a group of people that would believe. And so whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. So he foreknew that there would be those who would believe. And he predestinated all of them to be conformed to the image of his son. What does that mean? That ultimately, when you die, you will be conformed to the image of Christ in that you'll have a body like his resurrection body. The Bible tells us that. The Bible tells us that you'll be without sin and not capable of sinning anymore. The Bible tells us that you'll have a resurrection body that will last forever as you will live in the presence of God forever and ever. And uh, you will be uh, like Christ in that he was without sin and that he was perfect in God's sight and you will be seen by God as though you were just like Jesus. That has been predetermined for all that God foreknew that would believe. But here's the tricky part. God did not 
know who would believe because he made their choice for them. But the very opposite is what the Bible teaches. So he naturally knows the future, but he doesn't make your choice for you. And nowhere does it ever say anything different. We find also it says in verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also invited to be saved. And uh, whom he invited, he also then justified. And whom he justified, he uh, also glorified. So what it's saying here is that he gave an invitation. The word call means to invite. He invites everybody in the world to become saved. And if you become one of those who choose to trust Christ, then you are one of those that he's predestinated to be conformed to the image of Christ and to go to heaven to have eternal life and so on and so on. But God has not made your choice for you. He invites you to be saved, but the choice is yours as you respond to his calling or his invitation. So the Bible, again, is very clear that uh, the choice is in your ball park and you are responsible to choose Christ. But if you die without Christ, you'll go to hell. But if you trust Christ, then the Bible says that he's predetermined that all that trust Christ will go to heaven. They'll be conformed to the image of Christ's Son and uh, they will live with the Lord forever and ever and ever in heaven. One of the passages that seems to cause some people some problems is Romans chapter 9, but it's simply because they don't read it very clearly. It says here, For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. Now, people read this and they say, look at this, these children weren't even born yet. They didn't do any good or evil. And uh, it was said here that the elder shall serve the younger before they were ever born. Now, what it is not saying here is that God chose who would be saved and who would not be saved. What God did was, before the children were ever born, and these are the twins that were in the womb of... uh, Uh, Rachel here, it says, and not only this, but when, or rather Rebecca, also had conceived by one, even our father Isaac, she had two children in her womb, twins, uh, Jacob and Esau. And God told her which one would be the one through whom the Messiah would come. He says, the elder, which was Esau, shall serve the younger, that's Jacob, And what God just simply did here was choose the one that the Messiah would come through. Notice it says here, Neither having done any good or evil, these two children, Jacob and Esau, that the purpose of God might, uh, according to election, might stand. What is God's purpose when he elects people to be saved? Well, he elects them not of works, but of him that calleth. So here are the two key things about God's electing people to be saved. He doesn't elect them on the basis of works, which salvation is not based on works, but he elects them based upon his invitation. So when he calls or invites you to be saved, and the Bible says, whosoever believeth in Christ should not perish, but have everlasting life, then your response to that invitation, when you believe on Christ, you are elected then to be saved. Not on the basis of your works, not on the basis of confirmation and church membership and, and uh, doing good works and prayers and all the things that people list. It's not based upon any works that we do, but it's based solely and completely upon God's invitation that the one who would believe on the Messiah, Jesus, that came of the lineage of Abraham and Isaac through Jacob, not Esau, God selected out which son would be the one through whom the Messiah would come, that his purpose, as he would bring the Messiah to us down through time, 
that he would save people not based upon their works or their deeds, <clears throat> but save them on the basis of their choice in, in responding to the invitation when God invites you to become saved that uh, you would respond and trust Christ as Savior. <clears throat> so the Bible here, again, doesn't teach that God has made the choice for you. He simply has determined how the Messiah would come, how the plan of salvation would be worked out, who would be in the lineage of Christ. But he chooses to save people when he elects them to be saved, not on the basis of their works, but simply as to their response to the invitation. Now the invitation is in John 3.16. For God so loved the world, that's all of the human race, so that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ, that whosoever, here's your invitation, God invites you to believe on Christ. And when you believe on Christ as your Savior, then the Bible says that God elects to save you. In John 3.16 he says, then you would not perish, but he says, secondly, you would have everlasting life. So God elects that you'll have everlasting life, that you'll not perish because Christ perished in your place, but it's based upon your response to the invitation to be saved by trusting Christ. It's not based upon your works or your deeds. There is no scale one day where your works will be placed in the scale and you'll watch and hope for the best that your works, uh, your good works might well outweigh your bad works so you can get into heaven. Right now, you could trust Christ as your Savior and be a part of what the Bible calls the elect. The elect are the chosen or the one God elects to be saved, but he elects you to be saved based upon your response to the invitation of John 3.16. That whosoever, <coughs> excuse me, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So have you ever done that? Have you ever trusted Christ? If you do, trust him. God elects to save you, not based upon your works, your deeds, your behavior, but he elects to save you based upon what Christ did for you and your response to the invitation to trust him as your Savior. You could trust Christ right now. You could whisper a prayer between you and the living God. And you could say something like, God, I admit that I'm a sinner. And we all are. You could say, I don't understand a whole lot about the Bible. And most people don't. But what you've heard so far, I hope, makes sense. And you could say, God, I believe what I've heard. That God so loved the world, that meant me. That he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ. That whosoever believeth, that's me. If I would believe in Christ, I would not perish. I would have everlasting life. And you know, the moment you respond to that, invita that invitation and believe or trust that Christ died for you, God saves you. And from that moment on, you can be sure of going to heaven. Now, God did pick Jacob over Esau as the one through whom the Messiah would come. But he never chose Jacob to be saved and Esau to go to hell. That was not what it's saying. But in order that his purpose, according to election, how God would elect people to be saved, how the Messiah would come into the world, he'd come through Jacob, not Esau, and God would choose to save people or elect to save them, not on the basis of their works, but on the basis of their response to God's calling or invitation. And basically God says uh, that he invites everyone, whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ died for them, God says they would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. I made that choice when I was 18 years of age. It was the best choice ever made in my life. And right now I still possess eternal life. I received it when I was 18 and will possess it forever and ever and ever and ever. You too can receive this wonderful gift of everlasting life by simply trusting Christ as your Savior. And if you've never done so, then this is the best chance right now for you. While you're thinking about it, while you're confronted with it, just tell the Lord that you trust Christ as your Savior. I'm Dr. Ang Lindstrom, and we have lots of resources at Bible Line to help you grow and develop CDs, DVDs, books, Bibles, things that I recommend, and uh, we want you to take a look at a few of those. Also, you can help Bible Line stay on the air by your gift to Bible Line. 
maybe by credit card. I'm going to take a short break, show you some of the products. We'll come right back and finish up the program. So please don't go away. We'll be right back after this short break. This program that you have been watching is a part of a 65-minute DVD video presentation that you can order. And uh, you might want to get the full teaching that the program you just watched is only a part of. You might notice we have lots of these DVD presentations on many different topics. The Two Judgments, The Rapture, Repentance, Faith Without Works, uh, Is the Bible the Word of God, and many others. And these will be great for you to not only learn the Word of God, but also to uh, use in teaching situations in a class or whatever. And uh, you might want to order them. They're for $20 each plus shipping, and we can get these right out to you. But we have many topics, and you can call for a resource list, or you can uh, look on our BibleLineMinistries.org uh, website where you can look at a picture of all these different uh, DVDs that are available. This is a gospel track that really works. It's a quiz. We, uh, we uh, have them available for 100 for $15. It's a quality paper. It says, Am I going to heaven? There are 18 choices. They're all wrong. And then there's a verse of scripture highlighted in blue that tells why each is wrong and why the correct answer is trusting Christ. This is a kind of a track you can give to somebody and there's a good chance they'll trust the Lord if you do nothing else but just hand it to them because it just guides them right through the plan of salvation to trusting Christ and uh, encourages them to do it in a very clear fashion at the end of the track. So these are available for $15 for 100 very powerful. This book called Every Prophecy of the Bible is a favorite of mine. It is a very thick book. There's hundreds and hundreds of pages in this book written by John Walford, a past president of the Moody, or rather of uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. And a uh, very, very uh, wonderful book. We would encourage you uh, to get a copy of this as a gift for someone else or for your own study about the Bible and prophecy. This book called The Treasure of Sc uh, Scripture Knowledge is a classic. This particular book is uh, filled with cross-references that will uh, take you uh, on uh, lots of different journeys as you do your personal study or prepare for a lesson. It's certainly well worth its weight in gold, and you might want to get a copy of this particular book called The Treasury of Scriptural Knowledge. The Schofield Bible is a favorite of mine. It's the Bible that I use, and this is a copy of the 1909 edition in the hardback. We also have it in softback and uh, in leather and so on. But uh, you can order this Bible. It'll be a powerful resource for you as you study the scriptures. And call our operators and they can tell you how to order. Thank you for watching Bible Line. I'm Dr. Hank Lindstrom and we know uh, that uh, salvation is a wonderful gift and I hope you've received it. And it's our passion that everybody who watches Bible Line would would learn uh, how to be saved and have the assurance that they are. You know, 1 John 5.13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, K-N-O-W, that you H-A-V-E have eternal life. I know I have eternal life, and you can know it because the Bible says so. 1 John 5.13 is a powerful verse. We also want you to know that uh, Bible Line is listener-supported. And we need uh, people who will pray for us and give to the program to keep it on the air. And uh, we don't have a piggy bank. We don't have a reserve account. I don't get paid to be on television or radio. But our staff also volunteers themselves. We are trying to get the gospel out. You know, Paul, in talking to the Philippian believers about giving, he says, not that I desire a gift. He's saying, I'm not trying to get your money, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. We believe Bible Line is having a powerful impact on those who watch it. And if you'd like to be a part of the fruit that this program is, uh, is winning and have that account to your account in heaven, then you might want to make an investment in giving to Bible Line. There's no gift that's too small, and we trust that God he will supply so that we can continue to be on the air. It really is a miracle because we don't have any pledges, we don't have a piggy bank. We don't have a reserve account. We trust God to supply to keep these programs coming to you. And maybe you'd like to be a partner 
And you can give a gift by credit card over the phone if you'll call our operators. Also, if you order resources from us, that will help also to keep Bible Line on the air. Most of all, we care about your salvation. I hope you've trusted Jesus as your Savior. I hope you'd pass that word along to your friends. And if we can help you, we have some great evangelistic tools, tracks, CDs, DVDs, and even our website is a means of reaching people for Christ as it begins with a seven-minute video presentation uh, of me giving the gospel to those that you get to turn to our website. That's what they'll see first because we really want for everyone who comes across our path to know how they can receive the wonderful gift of everlasting life by trusting Christ as Savior. So we're looking for those who will help us stay on the air. God is raising up people just like you who enjoy the program, who are willing to say, I'll cast my vote to keep Bible on the air by giving a gift to Bible Line. And God is using people like you to keep us on the air. If our partners ever cease to give, then we'd be immediately off the air because we really couldn't afford to be on the air. We are trusting that God will supply. And again, we believe he's using people just like you who enjoy the program to uh, take care of that need. And maybe you'd like to give a gift to Bible Line. You can send it to Bible Line at 4811 George Road in Tampa, Florida. You can also give a gift by credit card over the phone. You can also call in and order some of our resources, which will obviously also help us to be able to uh, continue to bring Bible Line to you. And we hope you'll check out our website and our online bookstore, a place to order resources, pictures of them, and a place also to be able to give, uh, give a gift to Bible Line. Again, though, if you've never trusted Christ, please just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I believe Jesus died for me. I trust him and his shed blood is my only means of reaching heaven, and God will save you. I'm Dr. Hank Lindstrom. Pray for us, and we'll be praying for you and looking forward to being with you each and every week here on Bible Line. Join us next week and tell your friends about the program. God bless you, and have a great week. I'll be looking for you right here next week on this program, on this station at this time. You've been watching Bible Line, a presentation of Bible Line Ministries of Tampa, Florida. Your donation to Bible Line makes it possible for this ministry to continue. Bible Line's address is 4811 George Road, Tampa, Florida, 33634. To order from Bible Line, call our toll-free number at 1-800-576-3771. That's 1-800-576-3771. Or visit Bible Line online at BibleLineMinistries.com or .org. Be sure to watch next week for another edition of Bible Line from Calvary Community Church in Tampa, Florida.